So my wife, all she cares about is lavish living and yada yada yada. I can't put up with that lifestyle anymore. So I decide to just say, you know what? I'm done with you. Well, guess what? As soon as I divorce her, somebody very close to me swoops up and gets her off her feet. And you won't believe what this person, well, my brother, why he did it. Hey there, I've got a story to tell you, but I don't want to sound like a woman hater. However, uh, experience has altered my perspective on things, and I'm now of the opinion that a man should never get married to a lady who has more money than him. I'm a law graduate, and I've been struggling to make a name for myself and my career. The only family I had growing up was just my brother Noah. Our parents had passed away, and I had to do menial jobs just to see myself through law school. I guess that's why I have got an admirable physique, a six-foot-five brown-skinned stud. After graduating from law school, I did the major thing most people in my field would do, and that's creating my own legal company. But it was just a name as I was facing the same challenges most people starting a venture faced. No clients. I did my best to try to connect with people. I tried gaining visibility and, well, it paid off when I got a call one day from a friend who was referring me to the friend of his sister. I got in touch with the prospective client and we set up a meeting at her family home. I eagerly anticipated and prepared for the meeting as I wanted to make a perfect impression on who I felt was going to be the first client of my brand. The day came and I made sure I was clean shaven and putting on the only clothes which I had for special occasions such as that. A black suit, which I had owned since my law school days. I didn't have a car of my own, so I did have to hire a taxi. We were held on a traffic for some time, so I arrived a few minutes late at the house of my prospective client, Miss Cherry. I was ushered into the house by one of her housekeepers, and I just waited while they informed me of her presence. She came downstairs as soon as she was alerted I was there, and everything about her screamed, Money. I stood up and greeted, but what I got was, I expect that whomever I work with should be very conscious of time. Besides her beauty and money, she was equally spoiled. So... I apologize for coming late, and she proceeds to tell me why she needed my service. Cherry said that her parents were away on a vacation somewhere, and she was left in charge of the house. She, however, noted that one of the staff who worked in the house had stolen her jewelry, worth around $1,200, and so she had arrested her. She wanted the staff to sign an agreement where she would forfeit 50% of her monthly salary for the next six months, until she had completely paid off the debt. We both went to the station and I met with the staff. This was a man who was in his mid-fifties, and from what I learned, he had been working for Cherry's household even before she was born, and the reason he had taken the jewelry was that his son was stranded in college. I'm not trying to downplay what the staff did, but hey, I felt Cherry was being overly wicked. She just wanted to exact dominance and use him as an example to the other staff in the house. Well, all the same... I had a job to do, so my opinion simply did not matter. I explained to him the consequences of Cherry pressing charges and suggested he agreed to the terms. Everything was finalized and the staff was released. I was glad that I had earned a few bucks, but that was just the beginning of the relationship I would end up regretting. Cherry called me two days later and just simply arranged for a meeting that evening, uh, well, this venue... Uh, this time around had shifted to a very popular and expensive restaurant inside of the city. I got to the venue looking professional with my briefcase as I felt there was another case which I could profit from, but oh boy, I was dead wrong. Cherry was seated at the table when I arrived. I was surprised to see that she wore a smile even though she had arrived at the venue before me. I greeted her and started apologizing for showing up late once again, but she stopped me halfway through it. Cherry asked me to take away the ma'am title, which I used to address her and noted that she had invited me properly to thank me for the way I handled the case. She had paid me, so I felt somewhat uncomfortable with her wanting to quote properly thank me. Anyways, I eased up after a while and the evening went great. We talked a lot with her doing most of the chit chat and they revolved around her. She insisted that her driver stopped by at the night at my apartment, and my brother Noah, who was looking out through the window, was surprised to see me come out from the backseat of a Mercedes. He pressed me to know what was going on, but I told him it's no big deal. Well, it was. 
I was enjoying my sleep the next morning when Noah screamed my name while running into the room. So I jolted up immediately and I could see the look of astonishment on his face. He asked me what kind of jackpot I had won. I looked confused and Noah did not wait to get an answer from me. He just pulled me by the hand and headed outside, so I got to the front of the house to find a gold Kia Forte parked just outside, and it was brought there by Cherry's driver, who had dropped me off last night, and he claimed that she had asked him to come and deliver it, and he left before I could even say anything. I was still amazed at the whole thing, and if I'm being honest, I was somewhat uncomfortable. I don't know if Noah was listening to my thoughts, but he immediately held on to my neck like he wanted to choke me and declared that Cherry was my ticket out of poverty and I should not let her go no matter what. I called Cherry to confirm if the car was truly from her, and I placed the call on loudspeaker. She confirmed it, and was asked if we could meet up later that evening. After we hung up, Noah said I'd caught the golden bird that would be laying all the golden eggs if I was smart. I would use this opportunity to my advantage. It was easy for Noah or anybody to say, but I felt uneasy about the whole situation. Yes, she had given me a Kia Forte, someone she barely knew, but she had a staff who had worked for her family before she was born, get arrested and detained for a jewelry that was nothing compared to what she gave me for free? This did not look like the kind of woman I would want to have anything to do with besides my profession. All the same, she was all over me and Noah was cheering me on from the sidelines, so I just went with the flow, you know? We got married! two months later, <laughs> and we moved into a house which was gifted to Cherry by her parents, but that was the beginning of a life of absolute misery. I discovered by experience that there are a lot of things that money cannot buy, and happiness was one of them. Cherry held a key position in her father's company, but she did not go to work. This was not a problem for me, though. My issue was that, though, she was married. She still wanted to live life like a single lady, and she would often go to clubs and even have a girls' night out with her female friends, and the places they had these moments were places, in my opinion, which were not dignifying for a married woman. I tried talking to Cherry to cut down on certain things that she did, you know, especially sleeping outside her home for up to three days, but she said that she had a life being four, getting married to me, and marriage did not mean her life was supposed to come to an end. On one occasion, I tried to make her see that though getting married to me did not mean her life had to come to an end, it did, however, certainly imply that there was an expectation. You know, a general expectation of a married woman. And that she supposedly has to live up to, but Cherry snapped at me, guys. She said I was nothing when she picked me up and decided to change my life, but now I just felt I could dictate her how she was to live her life. She clearly said to my face that I was nothing without her. I let the issue slide, but things got bad two weeks ago when she came home drunk after spending two nights outside the house, and she passed out on the couch. So I curiously went through her phone, and I discovered that she had spent some time with her lover. I waited till morning before confronting her about it, but rather than admitting her fault and apologizing, she was angry at me for going through her phone. I did not want to stay around her as I was afraid I might not be able to control myself. So, guys, I went ahead and I moved out. I told her that I wanted a divorce and she said it's A-OK -okay with her. I'm currently uh, just staying uh, with Noah and he has been raving mad at me ever since I told him that, hey, I want a divorce. I told him uh, my wife was cheating on me and I only told him that... Well, he said we can no longer live as a couple, and he said I would be making the worst mistake of my life. The painful part was when I told him that I was not contending for any property. Well, um, the only property we owned beside the car was the house anyways, which her parents had given to her, and you know what, guys? I'm just simply not interested. She could keep it for all I care. I just need my space. I really do. And peace and quiet, the divorce will be finalized in just a few days. Update number one. Things have been going awry for me ever since my divorce from Cherry. I expected this, though, because her influence had gotten me most of the clients I worked for. All the same, I'm enjoying the kind of peace that I once had when she was not in my life. My focus, however, is not on me, but on my brother Noah. 
I moved back with him after my divorce and he never failed to ridicule me for quote letting Cherry slip out of my hands. Well, what can I say, Cherry's quite the slippery fellow, well, who cannot be kept by anybody. I observed the change in Noah's lifestyle shortly after my divorce. He began uh, keeping late nights and acting all secretive, unlike the brother that I knew. Noah did not want to spend time engaging in conversation with me for as long as he did, uh, well, not want me prying into his business. His spending habits equal equally increased and I was curious because I knew that he did not even earn much from the company where he worked at as a sales representative, as though that was not enough. He told me his plans to resign from his job and when I asked if he had gotten another, he said he had and his eyes fixed on greener pastures. I told him it was not wise to ditch his job for the promise of greener pasture. Experience has taught me that it's not always greener on the other side, and besides, a bird at hand is worth more than a million in the bush. Noah did not pay attention to me. He simply told me that he had everything all figured out, and I was surprised when, on the day of his resignation, he partied late with his friends and came back with some really expensive stuff. So I get scared as a lot of thoughts began through my mind. What on earth could Noah have dabbled into that gave him the kind of money he was throwing around? I thought to myself. Three days after we had resigned from his job, he informed me that he was moving out of the house because he had rented a better place. I knew he was definitely up to something, but I didn't push it. Besides, he was old enough. Noah called me two months later and noted that he wanted to see me for something very, very important. He came to the apartment by the weekend and I was eager to hear what he was issuing about. He finally told me that he was getting married. Well, this was great news, so I wondered why he was finding it difficult to even tell me when, you know what, I would be always happy for him. I asked who the lucky lady was, of course. And Noah proceeded to tell me that the lucky lady was Cherry, the very woman I just divorced a few months back. Ah, uh, I looked at him just to make sure he was not kidding. Noah said he was serious about it and went ahead to tell me that they had fallen head over heels for each other. I looked at my brother and did not know what to do or say. How could my brother be telling me that he was engaged to be married to the woman whom I divorced a few months back? How did they connect so soon? Noah pulled out his phone from his pocket and my attention was then thrown to the ring on his finger. He was indeed engaged to somebody and he went ahead to show me images of their engagement party and it was for real. I took a long minute of silence as I did not know what to say. I told him that he was crazy because it was either he had his eyes set on Cherry while we were together or he had gone after her once we were actually divorced. Either way, I was not in support of the marriage. So, Noah asked if there was anything wrong with him getting married to my ex-wife and I said, uh, yeah. I asked if he had asked himself why our marriage did not work out, but Noah just said my marriage to Cherry did not work out because we were not compatible but he was sure that she was the one for him. So I asked if he was in love with her or the money. And he stood up in anger and looked at me and said that he had come out of respect. But rather than be happy for him, I was angry and jealous his woman had chosen him. He said he was going to get married to Cherry and my opinion simply did not matter. Noah stormed out of the apartment, but what he does not realize is that Cherry is nobody's woman. Whatever he was enjoying would only last a little bit, and the thrill would only remain, and it would not remain forever. Update number two. Well, this has been ten months since my last update, and the things I said are beginning to play out. Noah got married to, quote, his woman, Cherry, against my warning. I did not just warn, I tried to be stumbling, block, but my brother was too stubborn to listen. I called him severely over the phone and warned him against what he was trying to do, but he did not give me a listening ear. One time, when I called, he took the phone and handed it over to quote his woman. I almost jumped out of my skin when I heard Cherry screaming from the other end. She asked me to stay away from her, otherwise she would use every resource at her disposal to make my life absolutely miserable. After she was done, uh, Noah just took the phone and warned me never to get in touch with him again as he did not consider me a brother anymore. I felt really bad, but I decided to let him make the mistake so he could just learn from it just as I did. Well, they got married shortly after, and I obviously could not attend. Not like I wanted to, anyways. Even though Noah, well, had distanced himself from me, 
We still followed each other online, and he made sure to use this as an avenue to rub it into my face that he had finally gotten married to Cherry. He posted pictures of the places they went for their vacation, and expensive lifestyles that they led, and although Noah never called me out directly, I knew his posts were just targeted at me. There was one post that he made. He put up Cherry's picture and wrote, You're not worthless. You're just around someone who was too blind to see your value. Wow. I did not let it go to me because, you know, I knew it was only a matter of time. A short time before he saw what I saw. True to what I said, I stopped seeing Noah's good time post within a few months after his wedding, and I suspected there was already trouble in paradise. I was at home yesterday morning when the doorbell rang. I went there to the door, and to my amazement, it was no other than the brother that I thought was Noah. And he looked worn out. He was a far cry from the person I had seen in the images, and you could tell all was not well. So I stood at the door and did not want to let him in. He began pleading with me right then and there that he had come to make peace. He claimed he now realized that it was wrong for him to have turned his back on me simply because he was getting married to my ex. I was not interested in whatever he had to say, so I attempted to bang the door on his face, but he knelt and pleaded. I was touched seeing my brother like so with the heart of a brother. I ushered him inside to my apartment. It was clear that all was not well with them, but I still needed to ask... I asked how his marriage was going and he said it was okay. I knew he was only holding something back, but I was not going to force it out of him. I made him feel at home and we talked about other things that did not relate to Cherry, but I could not take my mind off what my brother was looking at. I mean, he was lean and his eye bags were full, almost as though he had not slept in days. We spoke late into the evening and I reminded him of the time he suggested that he leaves before his wife came to look for him. I was the last person she would want to see, but it turned out that leaving the house was not in my brother's plan. He asked if he could just spend the night at my place. It was almost as if he was scared of going to his own house. I asked if his wife would not make a fuss about it, and he just said she had not been at home for the past three days, and even if she was, it was not going to be an issue at all. Well, I could relate to what Noah was saying. If Cherry had started spending days outside the house... It only meant that the fire she had for him was no more there, and uh, somebody else had caught her flame. I let him spend the night, but I woke him up early this morning and told him to leave. I'm certain that my brother's currently dying in secret, and even though I want to help, there's nothing that I can do because he has not opened up to me yet. Update number three. Hey guys, I'm back. If this update I'm doing now has to do with the other person, I would be reeling in laughter as I write because things with Cherry have turned out worse than I projected them to be. Noah has gotten more than what he bargained for. He came to the house three days ago and he just banged heavily on the door to the point my heart skipped. I opened it up and with frustration written all over his face, the only thing he said to me was, You're right. I should have never made the mistake of getting married to her. Well, I chuckled on the inside because he deserved whatever he was going through, but I decided to be courteous by asking what the issue was. Noah said that every day with Cherry was an awful experience that was worse than the previous day. Oh, she's not the kind of woman any guy should marry. I felt we could make it work, but I know now I was wrong. Well, he was blinded and motivated by greed because money and attention which he had been getting when she was into him was no longer there. The golden bird that laid the golden eggs had flown away from the coop. It sounds really funny saying it, and I fought hard to kill the laughter that was already swelling on my inside as Noah continued with his sorry tales. He said that in a bid to salvage the situation, he had visited his in-laws just to tell them about his marital travails, which were being engineered by their daughter, who he claimed behaved like a lady not ready for marriage. Noah said he expected them to sympathize with him and call their daughter to order, but he received a backlash from them. To start with, they called him a gold digger, who would jump at his own brother's ex-wife because of money. They asked if he did not see that she was not ready for marriage when he was saying I do to her. They threw him out of the house and asked him to never show his face again, and all he was doing was coming to complain? I marveled at his absolute stupidity. How could he think his in-laws would support his cause? The fact that they did not care that their daughter was getting married to the younger brother of her ex? 
I mean, whom she recently divorced was to have been a pointer that there was the reason the daughter turned out the way she was. So, I then opened up to Noah and the real reason I'd gotten divorced from Cherry in the first place. He bowed his head in shame as I brought him up to speed about her infidelity towards me. I don't plan to simply rub it in his face, but he felt guilty. I then suggested to him that it was very possible his wife, my ex, was cheating on him. Noah said he was going to investigate, and if he discovered it was true, he would skin her alive. Well, I just smiled and smiled and smiled because it was his emotions talking. I warned him that if he laid his finger on her, she could sue him for battery, and with her family resources at her disposal, she could make life miserable for him. Noah sought my opinion on what he should do because, according to him, he was not willing to continue with the marriage even if his investigation about her infidelity did not come true. So, I told him to get out of the marriage for his own good, and Noah left my house, and I was eager to see what direction the drama would take, and it took a very interesting turn. I came back home from work yesterday evening, and I found Noah sitting at the front of my door. He had a swollen face and bruises. So I called his name, but he could barely talk. I immediately rushed in. I got him to the hospital where he was admitted, and I did not have much useful information to give the doctors to work with, except that I found him at my doorstep like this. I was later informed by them that they were signs of struggle, and it's probably that my brother must have been involved in a fight or something. And you know what? They were right. Noah was able to speak just this morning, and he confirmed what the doctors had said. So I asked what happened, and he just mentioned Cherry. I had patiently waited for him to find the strength to explain the whole thing because it was not possible that she would have inflicted such kind of pain on him. Noah said that after our conversation that day, he had decided to hire a private investigator to follow his ex. Well, the investigator, after just a few days, called Noah and arranged a meeting with him to disclose his findings. He gave Noah picture evidence of Cherry engaging in public display of affections with all sorts of different men. Noah went back home in anger that evening, and to its further shock, he found out one of the guys in the house. Well, Cherry claimed he was one of her friends, but Noah knew better. He asked the man to leave the house, but Cherry insisted that he was her guest and she would not let him be disrespected. So the guest sat down comfortably as Cherry stood up for him. Noah, who was already engaged at this point, charged fiercely at the guy, and they were both locked into a fight. Cherry actually joined in, and together with her lover, they subdued Noah and gave him the beating of his life, after which he was kicked out. I was mad as I listened to Noah tell his story in pain. All of this would not have happened if he had just listened to me in the first place, and Notwithstanding, I decided it was time to make Cherry and her family pay. So I took images of Noah as proof of the battery that he just suffered. There are still a few steps to be taken, but one thing is for sure. Cherry and her family would be sorry that they ever cross paths with me. Final Update It's done. Noah's finally divorced from Cherry, and he did not just leave with money. He left with the satisfaction of revenge. Noah was still at the hospital when I began drafting his divorce papers. I was going to be his legal counsel, and after the paper was drafted, I took it to delivery at Cherry's place, and some guy was the one who opened the door when I knocked, and the fact that he had just, uh, his pants on, it was suggestive that he was her lover. I requested to see Cherry, and her face turned when she saw me. I did not bother waiting for her to make a statement about how she was disgusted at the sight of me, I just dropped the divorce paper at the table and told her that Noah was filing for divorce and demanding compensation for battery. Cherry sighed and asked me to tell my brother that, quote, he was nothing close to a man and that he was not going to get a dime from her. She claimed that he deserved every pounding that he's got and it was going to be her word against his. I was not willing to stay there and trade words for words with her, so I told her that we would see in her in court. I was about to leave when she said that it did not matter. If I was a lawyer, she promised that she would use everything in her arsenal, you know, specifically her parents' influence, to make sure my brother left her life the way I had. With nothing. Well, obviously, tension was already building at this point, but I was not willing to make any trouble as I was recording the conversation. But her lover boy jumped in and asked me to take my leave. 
like I was not doing that already, buddy. I could easily beat the heck out of him, but I decided it was not the day. I left the house and went straight to the hospital to meet Noah. I made sure that he made a video recording when he talked about his ordeal, and he equally presented images of Cherry cheating and the recording of our conversation where she had promised to use her parents' influence and money to make sure that he did not get the justice he deserved. So, I had told Noah to make sure that he stated in the video that Cherry's parents had threatened to make his life miserable. This wasn't really true, though. But with the evidence which backed up the other claims, it was not going to be difficult to get people to believe it. My reason for guiding Noah the way I did was to make sure that besides the damaging effect that the video would cause to our in-laws' reputation, there would be ample proof and evidence in the public space. And any judge who would preside over the matter would be forced to be fair as people would be anticipating the outcome. The video was made public, and before you knew it, our in-laws were Noah's, well, they were at his beck and call. They called to vent their anger, but they were careful not to issue any threats. My plan worked as exactly what I wanted to, and Jerry's parents could not get involved in the divorce process, and she was made to pay Noah $20,000. I know it's not that much when you consider our in-laws' fortune, but Noah's lucky to have gotten a dime. By the way, I did charge him for my services, but my greatest satisfaction is knowing that Cherry's parents would be forced to put her on a leash. <laughs>